Here we go for the final time. We are free. We're at, again, another D-shaped mile-and-a-half racetrack. We had some great racing at Texas. We had great racing earlier on at Atlanta. And if I'm not mistaken, both races went clean and green from checkered flag all the way to this, or from the start of the race all the way to the checkered flag, going in reverse there. So will we see the same thing here tonight in this race at Charlotte? Nathan Hudson starts on the pole position, trying to get Mercedes to victory lane for the first time this season, and it's been a very struggling season for Nathan Hudson so far. Last week, he moved up a couple of spots in points, but he's still mired 24th in the standings, but a win would certainly help that team out. Alongside of him, Kyle Matthews trying to put the second Hendrick Daly Motorsports driver in victory lanes. His teammate Jacob Lawler went to victory lane a couple of weeks ago at Texas, so uh, Matthews going to try and get himself to victory lane. Kyle Matthews has been on Quite a skid as of late. Started the season off great, but now finds himself 18th in the point standings. He actually lost two spots in the points after last week's race at Sonoma. Joshua Collard, another driver who's been losing points. He was a leader of the point standings a couple of weeks ago, before uh, I think it was before Texas, and now he finds himself down in 7th in the standings, a full 24 points out of the top position. Alongside of him is Sean Henley, who had a great streak going, but last week at Sonoma, things kind of took a little turn for the worse, and he dropped a couple spots in points. He's now 27th in the standings. And the top five going to be completed by Trent Dunham, who had a great run last week, a top five finish at Sonoma. He's now moved his way up to the third position in the point standings, has the Daytona 500 winner from this season. We're going to go down trackside now, get the command to fire up the engines, then we'll give you your point situation coming into tonight's race at Charlotte. We're going down trackside now as the driver of the number 27 Chevrolet out of Michael Norman Motorsports, Bob Jones, gets ready to deliver those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. This race is, uh, I guess you could say, it's supposed to be kind of the equivalent of the Coke 600 that runs in the Sprint Cup Series. Now, I do know that uh, in past races, I've actually had it be 60 laps of racing to kind of go along with the 600 lap of uh, the 600 miles of Coke 600, but we're only doing 40 laps this season, and uh, it should be a pretty long race still, nonetheless. Points come into this race. They are still somewhat close. They were really close last week, but they're still close this week. The new points leader is Joshua Michaels after a solid run. I think it was I think it was either 11th or 12th last week at Sonoma. And he's now the new points leader over Dylan Poteet, who now moved up to second. He's eight points out. Trent Dunham moved up to third. He's nine points out. And Dougie Shear still remains fourth in the standings. He is 11 points out of the top position. The top five is completed by Austin Mongold, the rookie. Moved up two spots to fifth. He's only 19 points out of the top position in points. John Cittadino was the biggest loser last week. Dropped five spots to sixth. Joshua Collin is seventh. Jacob Lawler eighth. Tim Walsh has now moved up to ninth in points. And Seth Cole is now in the tenth position. So here we go. Without further ado, the twelfth race of the season at Charlotte Motor Speedway 
is green. Nathan Hudson gets us underway. Inside line will be the preferred line here tonight for sure. Hudson easily pulling away to the lead. Now Joshua Collar going to follow him as well as Trent Dunham and Chris Dollerton. Seth Cole there in the tire tracks as well. Trent Dunham looking for Morris. He's going to go to the inside of Joshua Collard. That's with the second position. He had to let up a little bit there as Collard's going to try and get the run out of the high side. Coming out of turn number four. First lap of the night is going to be led by the Mercedes-Benz of Nathan Hudson, but maybe not for long. Here comes Joshua Collard looking low in the Mac Tools Ford. Collard trying to get himself back on track here after a pretty dismal past couple of weeks and now he will clear Nathan Hudson for the lead. Hudson now maybe going to try a crossover move down here into three and yes he will. Here he comes back to the inside line. So the nine and the six reverse numbers going at it here at Charlotte but Hudson not able to get the run there through three. It looks like that uh, even with the nighttime conditions especially the inside line there in turn three is a little bit slick. Driver's not able to really find grip and they have to let out of the throttle a little bit in order to avoid spinning out. That's why I think Hudson was not able to make a move on Joshua Collard there in three that last lap. Now Trent Dunham slides by into second. Now there's new company for Joshua Collard to have to contend with. Last two seasons, Joshua Collard has run with two different teams, but both times he's found victory lane. He went to victory lane twice with Gonzalez Motorsports in season eight, winning that uh, GNC Stunt Road, as well as the season finale at Armory Digital Super Speedway, and then last season, driving for Retro Racing Enterprises, went to victory lane at the road course of Sean's Lise, but now he'll lose the lead to Trent Dunham. Now, Trent Dunham, last week, ended up doing some fuel strategy. He was one of about 10, 11, 12 drivers that decided to stay out on the last lap, try and conserve fuel and get a decent finish, and it worked out for him. Trent Dunham now, I've talked to him before this race tonight, and I asked him about that move, and he said now because they won the Daytona 500, they've got a win. They're going risky now for the rest of the season just to try and see if they can do something unconventional to get a second victory. Right now, it looks like he is trying to get the second victory of the season here tonight at Charlotte, and now Joshua Collard side by side with him again. And there you can see, apparently the move for the inside has to be made in turn one and not here in turn three. Let's see if Collard can get the inside line ringed up in turn three here. Does he have to back out a little? He bailed a little bit, still kept it on the inside of the left rear quarter panel, but now has to tuck back in line here, coming out of turn number four. So Trent Dunham leading the way, Collard in second, Hudson third, Seth Cole now has moved up to fourth. That's another driver like Joshua Collard who was actually free-falling through the points uh, for the past couple of weeks and really needs to get back on track. He picked up a spot in the points back up into 10th in the standings last week at Sonoma, but now trying to continue to capitalize on that. And we talked about Richard Johnson uh, last week at Sonoma, how he was outside the top 35 in points, had to work his way back in. Well, last week he had a decent enough run that he moved to 33rd in points, and I'm seeing he's inside the top 10 here in this race as well. So this is certainly good for him. Another driver that actually has to work his way into the top 30 in points now is James Qualls in the 70. He won last week at Sonoma, but he was outside the top 35 in points. His win last week moved him to 31st in the standings. There he is. Currently scored in the 30th position. He needs to work his way up to the front a lot better than that. He's going to work his way into the top 30 in points and have that win make him eligible for a spot in the chase this season. Also seen another driver back there. Rather surprising. That is Joshua Michaels, the points leader. All the way back, he was scored 37th last time by. Let's see where they score him this time. Now 35th. Points leader not doing too well right now. Mired back in traffic. Let's see where uh, there is Dylan Pote. We know Trent Dunham's up in the front of the field. Dylan Pote, there he is. Right now scored in 15th. So I believe Trent Dunham would take the points lead over at this current moment, unless something happens here. Keep in mind, though, we've been green flag racing for eight laps here. No caution since the drop of the green flag. This is looking very similar to our race at Atlanta and our race at Texas. In both of those races, they had to do green flag pit stops. So these drivers may be in for having to do green flag pit stops here, and if that is the case, 
And there could be some strategy playing out here for the part of some of those drivers lagging back. They may end up coming down pit road a little earlier. They may not want to be up here in, in danger getting run over when they commit to pit road. You got to think about that too. Usually when we come to Charlotte, it's more of a longevity race than anything. Drivers having to do some big picture racing. Look ahead as to, hey, when do we have to come down? And uh, when do we come down? You know, how, how far can we make it after we come down? I would think this race would be only a one-stop race for these guys. I think they can make it to lap 20. There should be at least a 20-lap fuel window. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for them. But the problem that's going to be for most of these drivers, especially, is gaining track position while making a four-tire and fuel stop. So a lot of pressure is going to be on those pit crews to get that pit stop done quickly. Trent Dunham right now, he's got the easiest job on the racetrack, and that's just ride around. He has opened up quite an advantage between himself and a battle that's raging for second place. Joshua Collard has it. Seth Cole wants it. Now they're going to put Richard Johnson three wide back there. That's about the first time we've seen three wide here at Charlotte tonight. DJ Curtis up on the high side. Richard Johnson in the middle. And Zach McCann on the inside line. Now Richard's going to tuck in the line behind DJ Curtis. Very smart move there. Not saying that three wide is impossible here. They can definitely hold it three wide. But the toughest part to hold it three wide is off of turn four heading down the D-shaped front straightaway. Basically because, you know, that's a very difficult place to maneuver. And there really isn't, when you think about it, there really aren't three racing lines there. Look here with Trent Dunham. I mean, you can see Trent Dunham, he takes, he moves high, he moves middle, moves low, moves middle, moves high again. So, you know, for that ideal line, in order to set up a good entrance into turn one, it's very difficult for drivers to find a line when they're racing with two other cars in a three-wide formation. So far, so clean. As the Trent the Hedgy McDonald Chevrolet paces the field, looking for Tweenix Racing's fourth win of the season and second of the season for Trent Dunham which would more than likely lock two of the Tweenix drivers into this season's chase for the championship. Dylan Pote pretty much all but locked in with two wins this season. Trent Dunham would like to be the second. And he may have some more help because he's got a teammate that's now moving into second. Seth Cole. Although that might not exactly be help because you remember Trent Dunham, Seth Cole, Dylan Pote back, I think it was at Las Vegas. Those three really got into it in a battle for that win. Neither one of them willing to give an inch, and it was Dylan Poteet coming out on top. But there was a lot of there was a lot of competition between the Twinix Racing teammates there, and it may end up indicating that Seth Cole may not necessarily just let Trent Dunham get away with this win. Seth Cole may try going for it himself. See back there, another driver working his way up there. That's Jacob Lawler in the five. Lawler moved up into the top 10 in points with his win a couple of weeks ago at Texas. Then he picked up another spot last week at Sonoma. He's now up to 8th in the standings, and this is a track very similar to Texas. And we ran Texas under nighttime conditions. We're running Charlotte under nighttime conditions, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the exact same car, maybe, that Lawler won with at uh, Texas a couple of weeks ago. Three wide back here. Pichu London, Charles Jackson, Chris Washer. A little contact, I think, between Pichu London and Charles Jackson as well. And Charles is trying to find a place. Ooh, Chris, yikes. Chris Washer very close to the right rear of the Farmers Insurance Toyota. It looks like maybe they'll settle it out now. I think Jackson's going to be able to tuck in line ahead of Pichu London. He does. We are clear, at least up to this point. And Trent Dunham, that lead that he had, it has dwindled away. Seth Cole has chipped it now down to about three tenths of a second. He may be knocking on the door in the next couple of laps here. Joshua Collard lost the second position to Seth Cole. He may lose another spot. Kyle Matthews now getting a nice run out of turn two. Trying to reel in Joshua Collard's fourth. That'd be for third. Whoa! Oh, they're doing pit stops. Trent Dunham's coming to pit road. I was wondering why the 24 rode the ninth so far up the racetrack. Apparently, they had been told that the one was coming to pit road. So Trent Dunham's coming in, so is Richard Johnson, Johnny Gardner, Benjamin Miles, and William Duncan. All coming in this lap on lap 17, which now makes me wonder, hmm, can they make it the entire rest of the way on this one pit stop? 
If we go pit stops all the way to lap 20, then maybe. Seth Cole staying out, Matthew staying out, but here comes Joshua Collard in. Zach Buchanan. DJ Curtis is in, along with his teammate Charles Jackson. Dougie Shears, Pichu London, Lyndon Wright, Sean Henley. Whoa, look out. Oh, Cody Lamas just ran to the back of someone. He's got damage now on the 48. I don't know who he ran into the back of. Oh, and John Cittadino. That was a rather bizarre way of getting into his pit box, but they are servicing his car. Charles Sanford's on pit road, along with James McLeod. I think I see Cole Daly. Stephen Pollard the third in as well, and I think James Qualls, last week's winner, also hit pit lane. Some damage on the front end of another car. I think that's Ryan Acosta. It is indeed. And front end damage on Dylan Young's machine. Oh, and there's trouble there. Austin Mungle. I think caution could be out. I think it is. It is. Yes, yellow flag is out. Caution flag is waving. Tim Walsh has got damage. Joshua Michaels damage on the rear. The points leader. I saw another car that was damaged. I think it was William Duncan, who had just been to pit road. And the yellow flag is out. Drivers just now leaving pit road that had just been on the pit lane. Now the rest of the drivers that hadn't pitted are coming down pit road. Richard Johnson's got damage. Now Kyle Matthews is in. Tim Walsh is in. Michael Norman. Dylan Pote, Chris Washer. So I don't know who is going to cycle around as the leader after all this. But there are a number of drivers with damage, and I think Richard Johnson's got damage on the 47. I don't know for certain, but something makes me want to say that more than likely what just happened was that somebody merged onto the racetrack in front of oncoming traffic, or they might have ended up wrecking trying to come to pit road. One or the other, and we're going to find out either way as the yellow flag is waving. No idea who the leader currently is. Kyle Matthews was scored the leader last time by, but this thing could be all shuffled up after caution comes out right in the middle of green flag pit stops. Well, we had trouble take place in three different locations. One on the back straightaway, one in turn four, and one on the front straightaway. Here's the first one. Brandon Gonzalez, Dylan Young, Ryan Acosta, three wide. And either Brandon came up into Dylan Young or Dylan Young came down to Brandon. Whichever the case, 23 gets spun right in front of the field. Everybody diving to the inside in order to avoid. Tim Walsh tries to go around the high side. There's where he's going to get a piece of it. That's a tough break for a guy that's been on quite a momentum streak as of late. Here comes Michael Norman. Nowhere to go. He's going to get a piece of it. And then watch down on the inside there. There's Anthony McCrory. Now everybody goes to the apron to try and avoid. Joshua Michaels comes back up on track. After hit clipping the apron, he then slides up into McCrory. McCrory's going to go around. There's Michaels back up into Tim Walsh again as if one hit wasn't enough. Walsh gets it again. Sean Galligan gets into the back of Joshua Michaels. So he was involved. So McCrory goes around. And then there's something that happens further up here. And I think it's going to start... Maybe right now. Well, right there. James Silverfox might have missed pit road or something was slow. Danny Wells going to get into him. Up into the outside retaining wall goes the Rockstar Chevrolet. Silverfox going to slide right up into traffic, and I think it's going to be Ryan Acosta that gets him right there. Oh, my goodness. Heavy duty impact. And then here comes Dylan Young. He's going to get Danny Wells. Look at Silver Fox flying across the start-finish line. Jessica Shelton's going to just narrowly avoid. So will LaPlante. So will Bob Jones. And then there's Austin Mongold in the 60. I think he's going to be the one that gets into the back. Oh, no, Bob Jones got a piece of Silver Fox. And then there's Mongold. Man, been on such a good run as that rookie. And, man, just could not avoid the incident there on the front straightaway. And then everybody else coming off of pit road trying to avoid there's Dylan Young there's Ryan Acosta Danny Wells James Silverfox now from what I understood Richard Johnson and William Duncan both got involved after everyone was slowing down for the caution they ran into some drivers here on the apron portion oh no William never actually hit anybody but it was Richard Johnson Richard Johnson did not slow down if you watch here, 
Yeah, the car just stopped afterwards. Yeah, these drivers were all slowing down because they were getting picked up by the pace car. I don't think Richard Johnson realized that. And then all of a sudden he tries to go low and run straight into the back of Richard, of, not Richard Johnson, Dylan Poteet. And that gave Poteet a lot of rear end damage now. So Dylan Poteet, who was up inside the uh, top 20, now has damage. And Richard Johnson, who, like we said, is kind of on pins and needles right now, has to get himself into the top 30 in points for that win at Talladega to be able to be eligible to lock him into the chase. Now he is out of the race. So a lot of stuff taking place here right in the middle of green flag pit stops. Let's see how the thing cycles around who the leader is and try and set the field for you after a lot of stuff taking place here between lap 17 and 18. So after all of this is settled out, Zach Buchanan is going to be the one to get us back under the green flag on lap 23 of 40. That will give us a total of 18 laps to go. DJ Curtis is now in second. He will more than likely take rookie of the race here tonight due to Austin Mongold wrecking and retiring. Dougie Shears is third. Cold Alley fourth. James McLeod fifth. James Qualls is now up to sixth. Trent Dunham, who was the leader when the cycle of pit stops began, he's now seventh. Chris Dollerton eighth. Kyle Matthews is ninth. And tenth is Seth Cole. You see some drivers there on the inside line that are off the lead lap. They are Johnny Gardner, William Duncan, and Brandon Gonzalez. They are all one lap down each. Out of the race are the cars of Bob Jones, Austin Mongold, James Silverfox, Ryan Acosta, Tim Walsh, Danny Wells, Richard Johnson, and Dylan Young. So that's the whole settling out of what happened here, who's where and what. Anybody I didn't mention is on the lead lap outside of the top 10. So Zach Buchanan, after the cycle of everything, is now the leader for his first win of the season was a former winner last season. I'm not able to quite pull in where his win came. But he's going to get ready to get us back under green. His good buddy DJ Curtis right behind him. But they got lap traffic to contend with here. Green flag back out. 18 laps to go here tonight at Charlotte. And the big question is, were these drivers able to conserve enough fuel under these pacing laps that they're able to go clean and green the rest of the way? Or will we have another caution? Who knows? Zach Buchanan, though, that inside line got going, and those two lap machines are now no longer lap machines. Johnny Gardner, William Duncan back on the lead lap. They need a caution flag now to cycle them back to the tail of the longest line. Now Zach Buchanan finds a line on the inside just in front of Brandon Gonzalez. They're three wide behind him. Dougie Shears going to the middle underneath of DJ Curtis. Splitting the Brandon Gonzalez machine and DJ Curtis as he's trying to go for second, try and move up to the lead. Brandon Gonzalez, I'm not sure if he's quite up to speed. Looks like he's holding up the leaders there. Cole Daly now dives low for third off DJ, who cannot get to the inside line. And now Dougie Shears is all over the back bumper of Zach Buchanan. That's for the lead. Meanwhile, up ahead of them, the two drivers on the tail end of the lead lap, Johnny Gardner, William Duncan battling for position. And here comes Dougie Shears for the inside line. Not able to do it that time. Got loose there in three. We've seen that all night long. Very difficult for that inside line to get any momentum heading into three. Zach Buchanan leads yet another lap. There's Cole Daly now into third. Fourth place now DJ Curtis. James McLeod now there in the fifth position. William Duncan steps out of line on Johnny Gardner, but no moves for the lead yet. Now here comes Dougie, going to try and make the move in three again. That time he kind of moved Buchanan up the track, and that might have worked. He's gotten to the inside line, and here's the battle for the lead. Cole Daly looking to see which line is going to open up there in third place. DJ Curtis and James McLeod side by side for fourth. And here comes last week's winner, James Qualls in sixth, now getting by the lap machine of Brandon Gonzalez. New leader, Dougie Shears with the inside line goes to the front. Dougie Shears, our winner from Bristol, trying to become the second two-time winner this season. Lock himself up a spot in the chase. The season one Snickers Cup Series champion wants to go for the final season championship in Snickers Cup. As he goes to the front, Daly now battling Zach Buchanan for second at the line. 14 to go here tonight at Charlotte. So far, we've been able to keep it clean and green up to this point. But the question is, can these drivers make it the entire rest of the way on fuel? Drivers came down pit road between laps 17, 18, and 19 means that they were all either three, two, or one lap short on fuel to make it a full 20 laps. 
He went back green with 18 remaining. Did they have enough fuel conserved to make it the rest of the way? That's the big question. Is the battle's on just ahead of Dougie Shears? That's between two drivers on the tail end of the lead lap. Johnny Gardner, William Duncan. That, I believe, is a battle for 30 second. Yes, it is. All this going on ahead of Dougie Shears, who right now is riding ahead of a good, fierce battle for second place. Zach Buchanan's got it, but here come a lot of contenders there. Pole sitter Nathan Hudson, James Qualls, Cole Daly, James McLeod. I see Jacob Lawler and Jessica Shelton now in this mix, along with Trent Dunham. Another car back there, too, that I don't think I mentioned that's in this. Kyle Matthews, that's who it is, the 24. I couldn't tell who it was. James McLeod now moves to second place. The driver who comes into this race dead last in the points. How would it be for him to be able to go to victory lane here tonight? He's got Zach Buchanan, Cole Daly right behind him as those three, maybe they can stay single file, they may be able to do some kind of drafting to catch up to Dougie Shears. Shears though, getting the tail, tail, uh, the tailwind off the back of Dougie, uh, make that uh, Johnny Gardner and William Duncan though, so that's maybe helping him as far as fuel mileage. Chris Bellarton having a great run right there in the 33. He's currently scored in the sixth position. As James McLeod continues to try and run down Dougie Shears for the top position, Shears giving a little bit of room between himself and Johnny Gardner just ahead. This time by, let's see if McLeod cut down that lead at all. Last time was about four tenths. This time, it's still about four tenths. Dougie gaining a little bit that time. Dougie Shears, former Snickers Cup Series champion. James McLeod, former Mobile One Cup Series champion. One's been to victory lane this season. The other one has not. One came into this race fourth in the standings. The other one came in dead last in points. So you do the math. Who do you think wants it more? As Dougie Shears now catches up here to these two, Johnny Gardner and William Duncan, he may think about putting them a lap down, getting them between himself and James McLeod, which wouldn't be such bad strategy in the closing stages of this race. Whoa, Dougie, where is he going? Thought about going to the high side three wide. Now he'll dive bomb on, on William Duncan. Heading here into three, but that was a gutsy move by the leader. He thought about it, and he almost made it work. William Duncan going to clear him, and oh my goodness, look at James McLeod. Look at the run he got out of four. Here comes a 51 with help from Cole Daly. This race isn't over yet. Where's McLeod going to take his momentum? Looks to the high side. Cole Daly now going to move him out of line for second. Dougie Shear's going to hang on to the lead, at least for now. But still, that big question mark. Fuel, do they have enough? McLeod now clears Daly into second. Top three, nose to tail, and there's more coming. Dollarton trying to reel them in. Nathan Hudson, James Qualls trying to do the same. Now Daly peeks inside again on James McLeod, heading into one, trying to take over the second position. Dougie Shear's going to do a lot of mirror driving here, but he's got to keep a, a, a close watch on what's ahead of him, too, because there's some battling going on between Johnny Gardner and William Duncan, and if something happens between those two, Dougie Shear's has got to be ready, as now Johnny goes to the inside of William again. Dougie Shear's now going to draft up to the back bumper of these two again, and this may hold him up one more time and allow Cole Daly, James McLeod, and company to come right back on his front door and come a knocking. Dougie now going to look on the high side of Johnny Gardner. That might not be the fastest way around the racetrack right there, and that might allow Cole Daly to get some kind of a run here coming out of turn number two. Dougie now going to wisely back out, tucks back in line behind Johnny Gardner. Daly will clear McLeod for the second position. Here comes Chris Dollarton and James Qualls in fourth and fifth. They're now up here in the fray. Plays back to sixth place, Zach Buchanan. Five to go here at the line. Great racing at the front, but do they have the fuel to get to the end? That's the question. I mean, it's great racing going on here. Oh, doesn't matter. The yellow flag is waving. Caution is out for the second time tonight. It comes with five laps to go. And this changes everything. 
So now let's stick with the leaders because pit road would be open this time. Will the leaders be coming down pit road for maybe just a gas and go? Because I don't think we'll get back green. I'd be surprised if we did. We might though. We might get back green. And how about that big break there for William Duncan, Johnny Gardner? If we do get back green, they'll be at the tail end of the lead lap on the tail end of the longest line now because they were ahead of Dougie when the caution came out. Let's see, are they coming to pit road or are they going to try and do fuel conservation? They are all staying out. That says to me these drivers believe this race is going to end under yellow and they're going to try and milk it around for four more laps as they hit the stripe. No idea what the caution flag came out for. Let's quickly jump back and see, and then we'll come back here for the remaining laps here and see if this race is going to end under caution, or are these drivers going to be having to do some major fuel conservation in maybe a green-white checker or a one-lap shootout. Now well, here's what happened. This was a battle just inside the top 20. Sean Henley and Levi McIntyre. And boy, both of them racing awfully close to each other. Neither one giving an inch, and... End result, Levi McIntyre turning Sean Henley into the outside wall. And it doesn't end there. And then Levi is going to come back down the racetrack. He's going to avoid, but Henley is sideways. The car is going to drift back down in front of traffic. And the one he's going to get is going to be John Cittadino. There's Stephen Paul with the third involved. As Henley's car flips over, Charles Sanfer collected. And they're telling me something else happened behind them. Oh, maybe not. No, no. They were telling me that the three car was involved in some way, and maybe this is it. Right there. Yep. Gets into Stephen Pollard the third, and hard hit into the outside wall for Michael Norman, who just fell out of the top ten in points last week at Sonoma. And now a driver that was really strong early on. Now he's beginning a skid here in the points and that was brought out the caution flag here Stephen Pollard the third John Cittadino who another driver that's on a skid now after losing five spots and the points lead last week at Sonoma now may drop outside the top ten in points and Charles Samper his season's really been dismal here at the beginning Michael Norman now hitting a bit of a cold streak, and Stephen Powell the third outside the top 35 in points involved in this incident. So we're going to now step aside, come back to live action, see if these drivers have enough to get to the end, and will we get back to green flag racing? Oh boy, folks. Get ready for this. One lap dash to finish this race out. I do think it's worth mentioning Benjamin Miles hit pit lane when the caution came out. So I believe he is, uh, yeah, he's still on the lead lap, and he now, we know, has enough fuel to get to the end. But not sure about all these other drivers. Nobody coming to pit road under that caution. And we are ready to go for one lap around this track. It's going to be Dougie Shears, the leader, Cole Daly in second, third place will be James McLeod, Chris Dollett in fourth, James Qualls is fifth, 6th place, Zach Buchanan, Trent Dunham, 7th, 8th, Nathan Hudson, Jacob Lawler, 9th, and Joshua Collard will complete the top 10. Do they have enough fuel conserved to make it around this track one more time? They are going to definitely hope that their fuel pickup system gets them enough fear for this restart, or else we could see some cars stalling out at the drop of the green and white flag. It'll be a single file restart. Johnny Gardner, William Duncan, they've cycled back to the tail end of this pack. Brandon Gonzalez, the lap machine, I don't think he'll be a factor, at least not up here in the top 10. So it should be clean on this final lap. But the question is about fuel and fuel pickup. Here we go. White flag, green flag display at the same time. We're back underway one more time around. Can Dougie Shears hold him off for his second win of the season? James Qualls got a nice run on the high side. Not going to be able to do much with it. Here we go. Dougie Shears going to try and block Cole Daly. Daly drafts right up to the back bumper. Will he make a move coming here down the back straightaway? Remember, the inside line doesn't get much grip going into three, but 
Daly's going to try it anyway. Can he get to the inside line? Shears will try and throw the block here into three. Daly had to back out. He couldn't make it stick. High side advantage. Off turn four. Dougie Shears is going to hang on for his second win of the season. Dougie Shears may have just clinched himself a spot in this season's chase as he just barely beat out James McLeod at the line. McLeod tried it. He got the run. But he couldn't make the move soon enough, and he couldn't get the draft quick enough. But McLeod tried it, and he's going to finish eight one hundredths of a second behind Dougie Shears. And Shears is out of fuel. Shears is out of gas. There's some other drivers out of fuel there. Levi McIntyre is already out of fuel. Oh, Dollarton just flipped over. Dollarton just ran into McIntyre, and now he's flipped over and barrel rolling. There are more drivers out of fuel back here. Oh, look out. More drivers coming piling in. Look out. Yikes, I think all these drivers could be out of fuel. Collar's got damage now. Dollarton to pit road. Shelton had to pit. Shelton and London pitted. They couldn't make it. Shears is out of fuel. Gonzalez out of fuel. All these drivers are out of fuel. They're coasting, trying to make it. Look at Seth Cole wheel spinning it to try to get back to pit road. I think just about everyone's out of fuel. LaPlante's out of fuel. I think Shelton and London are the only two that are not out of fuel right now. Maybe Benjamin Miles. Levi McIntyre going to coast it back. James, make that uh, Joshua Collard is going to be able to get it back. Oh, looks like Shelton had to wait for these cars. They're having trouble. Same for London. Washer's out of fuel. Buchanan, Qualls, they're all out of fuel. They just barely made it to the end. Now I had to teleport back to Pitt Road. And I think our winner of this race, oh, well, there he is. Yeah, he had to teleport back to pit road, but he is the winner nonetheless. Had enough fuel, about half a lap of fuel left to make the end. Dougie Shears, fifth in points, or fourth in points coming into tonight's race. He is going to win here tonight, his second win of the season. So he and Dylan Poteet now are pretty much confirmed spots in this season's chase for the championship. A great run for Dougie that was really close. He just barely holds off James McLeod to get second. His best career finish of the year. Cole Daly gets third. Chris Dalton in fourth. And one week after his victory, James Qualls, remember we told you he had to work his way up into the top 30 in points? He might have just done that here tonight. Came into this race 31st in points and finishes with a top five. Zach Buchanan, great run for him in sixth. Joshua Collard, he gets back on track now. He gets seventh. Jacob Lawler, he'll remain in the top 10 in eighth as he continues his climb up the standings. Ninth place was Chris Washer, and the rookie of the race, DJ Curtis, is going to finish in the top 10 tonight with a 10th place finish. Not certain who the points leader is going to be after this. As you see, Trent Dunham, he ended up finishing in 19th. Dylan Poteet in 21st. Joshua Michaels in 23rd. More than likely, I would say maybe Dougie Shears might take over the points lead with that win here tonight. So he may have not only just won his second race of the season, but taken over the top spot in the standings. So we'll see if that's the case after all is said and done here and we get the official scoring results. But Dougie Shears may have just joined Dylan Poteet as a confirmed competitor for the final Snickers Cup Series championship here in Season 10. We'll only see, time will only tell if that will be the case. Thank you all so much for race, watching tonight's race here at Charlotte. If you enjoyed tonight's race, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. Fuel conservation comes into play for the second straight week. It happened last week at Sonoma. It happens here tonight at Charlotte. Here comes your official full finish results from tonight's race. Your overall point stands and your rookie points heading into next week. We'll see you guys next time as you've been watching a production of the NSRA Offline Racing at its best. Here. <laughs> this is good. You don't know you. Where are you going?
Can I just now? <laughs>